Kiara, welcome everybody. My name is Marcin Betke. Uh, as Nicole said, I'm a PhD student here and, and uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, collection, data collection. And uh, it will be focused more on, on why should we care about, about online data collection, because, because uh, there are several reasons for this. We'll go move along this, this agenda or this map uh, first to show the, the online commercial environment, because I will focus on the online commercial environment. Uh, then uh, just to pick up some mechanisms which are not visible for everybody, which, which uh, are, are there. Uh, then I'll talk about the harm, because the harm is not, uh, is not obvious, the effects of, of, uh, of the data collection. Uh, may be postponed, or, or there are risks which may eventuate, eventuate later, or, or, or people may be not aware about the, the effects. And I will uh, briefly cover the legal, the legal response, or the problems with, uh, with legal response. So let's, uh, uh, let's go to the uh, commercial environment. The, the purpose of this, of this slide is just to, 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 to show that, that uh, there is an online architecture which is set up uh, to collect as much data as possible to to, to generate profits, basically. And uh, maybe it's quite obvious that, that the uh, communication over online is mediated by, uh, by computers, uh, but it has some profound uh, consequences. First, we don't, we don't have all those uh, facial displays, uh, emotions, gesture, voice. We don't have it. We, don't, we, don't, we cannot communicate on this level. Second is that the other side are the machines, usually. They, they, uh, they sell the service providers. It's especially seen when we are entering the contract. We just see the form, which is pre-designed pre for us. We just click the form, and we are entering into agreement with, with some service provider. And the second thing is that, that uh, about architecture. Architecture in the, of the online is, is created by the software, by the code, which was, uh, which was the program, programming language, which was uh, found out but, or, or, or named by Lawrence Lessig, the American law professor. And this online architecture, that programming language, creates uh, as much as uh, uh, the corridors or the paths of our, of our online movement, as much as the the physical architecture we, we normally see here. And that architecture of the online is designed, designed fully by the service providers, so by the uh, corporations or, or, or enterprises, which uh, websites we are, we are entering, usually websites, but maybe applications as well. And <clears throat> sorry, what's, uh, what's quite uh, visible in the last time is that uh, all of our data, all of our uh, digital tracks are, are recorded somehow. Because, uh, because the data recording is easy because uh, of the technological progress and uh, because we leave more data. It, it can be data we leave in, in, in the web search, the words or the letters we type. It can be things we, we see, we think we click, we think we like on the, on the Facebook, for example. Uh, that may be about our behaviors, that may be about our relations, that may be about our interests or things we are looking for online. So, uh, and that may be about our location as well, because we move with our, with our electronic devices, which, uh, which records uh, our geolocation, which records uh, the, the networks which we are in the range of. So, in all these data are, are stored somewhere, uh, or there are companies who would like to store them because they are generating, they are profiling us. They are thinking about about us as a uh, our data as a possibility to gain to gain to to make profit on uh, on targeting advertisement uh, towards us. So we sooner or later will pay for this in in the in the price of products. However, uh, what we leave is, is our ever better uh, online profiles and. As I said, the, the collection is, is usually set by default. This slide is about information asymmetry, because uh, what we see uh, on what we know about the service providers, or how we, how we think uh, when entering the online environment, uh, how we perceive it is completely different than how it looks like. There's on the right side, we have the, the quite uh, famous uh, picture from a study of, of Debatin and others about the Facebook iceberg model. What we see is that, that, that the 
so on what's on the surface. So what is, uh, this is a service which is provided for us to communicate, to talk to people. Uh, however, uh, what we do not usually see is the second side of this market, which is invisible, which is where our, all of our data are, are, are mined, are stored, and are aggregated, and reorganized in just to, to, to make, to generate some, some profits. And that, uh, that specific business logic is that one side of the market is to lure customer, to, to provide some service which is usually or very often for free, while the profit comes from the other side, other side of the market. And this kind of logic is quite uh, popular in, uh, in online environments. So we are a product, in fact, on that, on that market. And it starts to bear some resemblance to, to, to what Nicole said about, about dignity and about autonomy. So we see differentiated ads because they are based on our profiles. We more often see differentiated prices because if the service, if service providers knows about us a lot, so why not to show us different products or different prices based on what we, what we, what we can pay? And there's a quite important aspect of this is that negative externality. It's just an economic term for for uh, simple uh, true that, that the, all the negative uh, costs of, of, of uh, misuse of data are borne by customers, not by, by service providers, because data are describing us. Uh, and uh, if the data is misused, and unless it's, of course, uh, data leak and, and, and the particular service provider is shamed publicly, uh, all the costs or the negative consequences are, are, are on us. We are bearing with the risk of, of data theft and, and security and, and so on and so on. Uh, that's a short, uh, as short as possible, uh, look at the, on the economy of the, of, the, of the digital environment. Since uh, it shows it's a value chain analysis, uh, strategic management analysis, which goes through from the production of, the, of, of, of online product or services towards consumption on the on the right, and uh, I show here. I'll show it here just to, to show how the the same names, the same uh, how the, the value chains is being integrated by, by the same companies. You can see the same names or subsidiaries in different parts of this of this value chain, and uh, that shows how this online because it's it's the internet is global. The companies are global. The services are global. So they uh, basically uh, expand on many different markets. They are cross-jurisdictional, uh, which uh, makes harder to, to pin it, pin them with, with some, some particular laws, because, because we are divided to, to countries. We don't have any global, global legislation. And so uh, maybe the only, the only place here uh, one more thing: the companies operating on those on those links usually compete or cooperate with each other. If, the, if that link, that all the that value chain is being integrated, it means that there is one company which basically uh, governs all aspects of of, of product uh, delivery to the to the customer. I would just one would like to put emphasis on on the right side on device and operating system that. We are more and more uh, supposed to, to log into our own devices. We are providing some, some uh, uh, unique uh, identifier. We have to log into our, to our device just to, 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 to identify us, which, uh, which is kind of change, kind of trend which we see uh, last time uh, from, I don't know, 10 years. While we used to own our devices and own our software, which could make some kind of, of mediation for us, which makes some work, some work for us, right now we are logging to, to, the, to the software which is provided by, by service providers. Probably the only part of this chain which is not integrated is connectivity one. I think in this, uh, in this aspect, it's, it's about network. It's about providing the infrastructure and the network and the internet itself. But think about the projects of uh, providing internet by drones or balloons in this context. And it's, that's, about, that's, uh, that's exactly about the last lacking part of the, of the chain. So, so where's the, car, the harm? Uh, I put this, uh, this picture of, of, of Panopticon. Panopticon is, is uh, 
is a model of, of Jeremy Bentham model of, of discipline mechanism of, of a prison. He was trying to, 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 to create a, a perfect prison, a place where, where which would be, uh, minimize the costs and maximize the efficiency of disciplinary mechanism. Uh, so build it in the architecture in that way that, that all the inmates, all the, the prisoners would be feeling observed, but they couldn't verify whether the power is whether they are observed in their, any specific moment. They just didn't know whether they are observed, in the, but they know that they could be observed. So they have to be, uh, behave in a, in a, in a specific uh, manner. So if we think about this, this particular uh, characteristics of panopticon mechanism, so architecture as a, as a mean to, to organize the, the, the whole thing, uh, the asymmetrical visibility, so that, that you are seen but you cannot see the other side, and the individualization of the each inmate in each of his own cell. We can think about online as a as it's, it's a quite good uh, good uh, concept uh, to to describe what's happening online. Michel Foucault, in about 40 years ago, generalized about that 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 panopticon mechanism, and he saw that that that, that it's not only the, the the prison itself. It's it's uh, it's somehow in, people are just integrating that that surveillance mechanism into into the the models of of uh, different apparatuses, different institutions like prison, not only prison but army, school, and the, he saw it 40 years ago, and and uh, we have yeah, what we see. Uh, what are the effects on this? The effects is that it's not a, a voluntary. Uh, relation where we are partners, we are entering the contract and we are dealing with some services. It's a disciplinary mechanism. It creates sub subordination, not, uh, not cooperation. The chilling effect. Chilling effect is, is if we know that we are observed and that we are traced and all our, our uh, moves are, are recorded, we, we change our uh, behavior. Imagine that if I would uh, ask for questions and uh, to put with, uh, just uh, put a stand here that all your questions will be recorded and streamlined on the internet. Whether you be probably not think twice whether, whether you would like to ask the question or not, because because it would be fully public. Yeah? Uh, and those those effects are, are are basically based on the same on the same values as uh, as were described by uh, by Nicole. Uh, it creates risks as well. Risks that, that, that uh, if we are individualized, profiled, that our uh, deficiencies are exposed somehow, will be expo exposed. Discrimination factors, for example. Even if we do not really uh, target, uh, do not really put people into the, uh, under the labels of different races, of different uh, incomes, it will turn out in the, in the massive data collection sooner or later. Abuse of power, risk of abuse of power is the risk of abuse of power of service provider. Risk of data leak is, is, is not fully managed by service provider. It happens when, the, when he's uh, lose control over, over the data. Uh, the harm in uh, more tangible probably for you about when, when these risks are eventuated. I put some, 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 a lot of examples here. But I will uh, go through it very quickly. Uh, first is the economic exploitation. It's that when our data are used to, uh, to generate more profits from us, and first to collect more data, and, and there were a couple of cases here that, that uh, uh, companies were overriding our protection mechanism to not to leave data on the websites. Uh, there were cases where the, the data were uh, used uh, to target the vulnerable. Uh, for example, American, American uh, data brokers were selling the list of people which they called suckers list, uh, which were uh, basically people who were vulnerable. They could enter uh, any kind of contract, basically, by the people uh, who were targeting them, with the people who were target, targeting them. Uh, there are product manipulations. I hear more and more about different prices for the same services based off of, of, of who is asking or who is looking. Remember that you are on the website that you don't see the offer which is targeted to everybody, but you see the offer which is targeted exactly at you. So, uh, especially with, with uh, buy, when you're trying to buy something which is one-off and with a higher price, that's the 
moment when, when uh, like I know, air tickets, for example. Uh, abusing occasion uh, is, uh, think about, for example, uh, Uber surge of prices during ter terrorist attacks in, in Sydney. There is a particular moment where people were looking for, uh, we can say about, think about it as a, as a pure market mechanism because demand was, was so huge that people will, will, uh, were willing to pay more for taxi. But if you think about it for a while, it, it's, it's not that you are looking for a taxi and, and uh, trying to escape from the terrorist attack and you, you expect to be charged, uh, I, don't know, I don't remember exactly, seven times more or eight times more uh, how it was. So the second thing is the autonomy, autonomy trap. And that's more about the, uh, our perception of the world and uh, what we see. We used to see, to meet some things or people which, are, which were random. If we move along the, the paths which are, which are pre-designed, we are in a kind of bubble. We see what, what we are supposed to see. And uh, we lose the full picture. Try to make the, the same web search uh, on two browsers or uh, put the same, the same uh, web selection, web, the same terms in your browser, you and uh, somebody else. You will see that the, 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 the search results are different. So we no more have this serendipity, so, so ability to, 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 to think, to, to spot something random. We may uh, have problems with freedom of thought because we are um, coining our ideas about uh, the reality, about the world, by looking for, for, for things on the web. If we won't look for, 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 any, for everything, we just will be targeted toward, towards some specific, uh, specific ideas. Uh, and this final slide is about legal response or, or to be honest of the problems with, of legal response because it's not, it's, um, the response can, can be, can approach from different, different kind, different sorts of law, different branches of law. However, uh, it's a problem for contract law with uh, notice and consent model. We, we are entering the agreements but it's, uh, there is a problem with consent as people prefer to the instant gratification, the instant joining the network, the, the social network or, or making a search or doing search. Uh, I don't think about prolonged consequences and that's, it's, it's in our nature. So that's, it's quite questionable whether a consent, not, consent model is, is, is the right one to, to, uh, to govern this. Uh, data privacy laws are suffering because, because the, the services are global, so it's a kind of race to the bottom that, that, that uh, we are as mar much protected as the, as the weakest uh, legislation the data is, 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 is processed in. Competition law is, is, is designed to, to deal with uh, economic harms. It's kind of quite hard to pin the exact amount of money we, we, we are losing. So we need to step back somehow and think about the good solution because I think the problem of privacy is, is from, the, from the beginning. Is, uh, maybe even to, to, to think about the definition, how we, perceive, how we perceive privacy, because privacy may be perceived as something which we are trying to hide or trying to, to protect in negative terms, or maybe perceived as something that we are, we are managing, actively managing our, our, uh, our information, our privacy. We are re revealing some information towards people and maybe we would like to, to manage our privacy. My idea for this is, is that, uh, that we would like to, to actively manage our privacy and, and the, the law should uh, give us some tools which uh, allow us to retract our decision from at some point, to, to be able to, to think about the whole process of, of privacy. And uh, yeah, and that's basically this. That we need to think about the reverse or neutralize this panopticon mechanism. And I think that's, that's all from me, from my side. Thank you for coming.